Hopefully you'll already be reasonably familiar with morphine. Morphine is a naturally occurring opiate with activity at both the mu and kappa opioid receptors. It belongs to the phenanthrene group of opioids, along with codeine and buprenorphine. It can be given by various different routes of administration, and its oral dose is equivalent to approximately half its IV dose. Intraoperatively, it's usually given in boluses of around 0.1 milligram per kilogram, titrated to effect. It can be presented in various forms, but you'll generally find it comes in one mil ampule containing 10 milligrams of morphine. So you need to dilute it with saline in a 10 mil syringe to a concentration of one milligram per mil. So let's go through again and match its pharmacokinetics to its usefulness to us in anesthetics. Another reminder that the unionized fraction of opioid is generally related to its speed of onset. Morphine has a pK of 8, meaning only around 23% of it is actually unionized at physiological pH, so its onset is slower than other opioids, as we've discussed in this series. It will not achieve a peak effect for about 5 to 15 minutes until after injection. It's not overly lipid soluble either, which means that its crossing of the blood-brain barrier is slow, which both prolongs its onset and delays its offset. Its volume of distribution is 2 to 3 litres per kilogram. Combine this with a clearance of 15 to 30 mg per kg per hour, and you're left with a much longer acting analgesic than the others we've discussed here, making it a good choice to bolus intraoperatively and postoperatively. It's metabolized in the liver, partly by demethylation to normorphine, and partly by conjugation to 3 and 6 glucuronides. But it's important to note that the metabolite morphine 6 glucuronide is active and actually is more potent than morphine itself. And this poses a problem in renal failure because these conjugates then accumulate rather than being quickly excreted as they should be.